Well, hello, Iowa State Fair once again. Um, I'm uh, Kyle Munson, the Iowa columnist for the Des Moines Register. We're here at the Des Moines Register Political Soapbox. It's a soggy soapbox today, but we press on. Uh, it's important issues. Uh, we've had candidates out here every day. Uh, we'll have more coming this weekend. And you can go to Des Moines Register.com uh, to see many of the candidates that uh, we've filmed here uh, and provided live video coverage for throughout the week. Um, we have a, another candidate stepping up now. We have Brian Jack Holder. He's running for Congress in the 3rd District. He is from Council Bluffs in southwest Iowa. His opponents in the race are Democrat Stacey Apple of Ackworth, Republican David Young of Van Meter, and there's another third party candidate in the race, Libertarian Edward Wright of Guthrie Center. Um, they seek to replace the longtime Congressman Tom Latham, a Republican who is retiring. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Holder. Thank you very much. Oh, I don't need that. I'm good. I'm good. Yep. Thank you. I want to thank uh, the Des Moines Register and the Iowa State Fair for giving me this opportunity to speak here today. Uh, I'm running for Congress in the 3rd District, and I'm doing this just to be a voice for all the the little people of the world who feel that uh, this government and sometimes the parties don't uh, exactly represent our best interest and uh, and I'm just here to be the voice of liberty so uh, I grew up in Council Bluffs Iowa uh, I've lived there my whole life I uh, went to college on a basketball scholarship uh, as you might assume I'm six foot seven and uh, I wasn't able to play college basketball due to a back injury, but uh, I completed my studies at uh, Bellevue University in Oman, or in Bellevue, Nebraska, and uh, earned my BS in psychology, and then I attended law school at Creighton University in, in Omaha, Nebraska, and I graduated there in 1998. And the reason I'm here is that, uh, frankly, there's, there's not enough of us involved in the government right now. Uh, the parties sort of have a stranglehold on, uh, on the government at the federal, state, and local level. And uh, I'm doing this to hopefully inspire other people to, to get involved in the civic process and to run for Congress. I've uh, run my own campaign. I haven't relied on anyone else. And uh, thankfully in Iowa, you only need signatures to get on the ballot for all offices. So you don't have to pay a filing fee. And over the last seven weeks, I. Uh, I went around my community in Pottawatomie County and I, I got uh, over 400 signatures to appear on the ballot in November. And uh, at the introduction they said, you know, I've got opponents running in this race, but as far as I'm concerned, I really don't have any opponents. We're all, we're all Iowa, we're all uh, Iowa citizens here. And uh, I remember 25 years ago I came up to Des Moines, up to the old Veterans uh, Memorial uh, Coliseum to play basketball for the state championship. And, uh, you know, our, our jerseys didn't say whether we were a Republican or a Democrat or a Libertarian or an Independent on it. it. We all had the same team name and we all did this thing together. Before I started my campaign, I did a little bit of research to find out exactly why there are only 435 congressional districts in this country of 310, 315 million people. And I ask all of you to ask your congressman when you go to these town halls why there's only 435 people to represent 300 plus million people. And the reason is that there's a constitutional defect that I discovered back in January. The original Bill of Rights, which was passed by the first Congress and written by our founding fathers and framers of our Constitution, the very first article that they included in the Bill of Rights was called Article the First, and I advise anyone that's interested in this to Google this. And Article the First would have limited a congressional district to 50,000 people. 50,000 people. Our district here has 760,000 people. And what that essentially means is that according to the founding generation, there should be 15 little districts and that way everyone that lives within this giant district receives enough representation in Congress and in our government. But now, uh, I just read a report yesterday that the average citizen has little to no impact upon elections, we have little to no impact in the laws that affect our lives, and we don't have a say in our government. And this is absolutely wrong. It's 2014, we're in the digital age, we've got the internet. We should have more transparency and accountability and responsibility from our elected officials. 
and it seems that as the days go on more and more we have less and less transparency they go away to Washington and we have no idea what they're doing and it's almost a full-time job just to keep up on all the issues that affect our daily lives and all the scandals that are going on and these scandals aren't just uh, uh, in the Obama administration there have been things that have been going on for probably uh, 100 150 years so I'm here to uh, ask the other candidates that uh, you know if, if they are, are willing to do what I'm doing I'm I'm willing to not take a paycheck to run for Congress I haven't asked a single person for a penny to run for this office and I've spent less than two hundred dollars of my own funds to get up here on the stage and to get on the ballot now in two years I want to see more of you up here on this stage I want to see more of my fellow citizens that get their names on the ballot because what I found is that the politicians don't care about us after election day they they don't care they you send them an email and it goes into a black hole somewhere but the media and your fellow citizens can't ignore the fact that that you've got your name on the ballot that you've demonstrated that you have a viewpoint that's worth listening to so I want to be able to uh, show other people that they can do this they can get on the ballot and they can be an advocate for whatever issues that they feel are important to them on the way up here I uh, was listening to a radio program on WHO and uh, they did a little news break and uh, I didn't realize it, but uh, 41 years ago today, the United States went off of the gold standard. And since that day, during the Nixon administration, our money has become more and more and more inflated every day, every year. And this punishes the worker, this punishes people that save money. And I fear that one of these days, our dollar is going to be so hyperinflated that it's absolutely worthless. If anyone goes to the grocery store to buy groceries, and you see how little food that your money buys these days. Uh, the price of fuel is, uh, is probably higher than it should be, and uh, we need to do uh, everything we can, can to reinstitute a sound currency system in this country. Because right now, our, our currency, our dollar, it says on the back of it, it says, in God we trust. 